Hello and welcome to Carson Model Sports Radio Control Car Video. This video takes you through the first steps and shows you all the basics of your new Carson Model Sport vehicle. Even so, you should thoroughly read the instructions and bring them along whenever you use your model. Next, unpack your vehicle, remote control and all the accessories that came with them Good. and place them on your work table. For operation and small repairs, you will need a few simple tools, such as a crosshead screwdriver, a small pair of combination pliers, and a set of hex wrenches. The Carson models are built ready to run. There's less work to do before you hit the road. Make sure all of the screws are tight. If necessary, tighten any screws that are loose. Attach the wheels with the nuts provided. Don't forget to check the wheel nuts before every use. To use the three channel 2.4 gigahertz remote control, you need four pieces AA batteries or four pieces nickel metal hydride AA rechargeable batteries. For example, Carson AA sets, item number 5006090000. Always follow the charging instructions for the batteries and the charging device. Open the battery compartment on the bottom of the transmitter. When inserting the batteries, make sure the poles match. Now, open the model's battery compartment cover. A 6 volt 2500 milliampere battery pack is enclosed to supply power to the receiver. This must be completely charged before you use it. An appropriate plug-in charger is included in the package. Connect the battery to the charger and plug it into the wall socket. Make sure to follow the charging instructions on the charger and the battery. Attention! Use only completely charged batteries to power both the transmitter and the receiver. For the next step, you have to thread the wire through the RC box outside into the antenna holder. Now you can put the cover back on the battery compartment. Cut the included antenna tube into the right length and plug the end into the input of the antenna holder. Make sure the antenna is correctly attached. Otherwise, there may be radio interference. Now the radio control system is ready. Before every run, you need to perform a small radio control check. Always switch on the transmitter first and then the receiver. Check to see that the servo is rotating and operating correctly. First, the steering servo. When you turn the steering wheel leftward, the tires should turn left. The same goes for the right. If the tires move in the opposite direction, the transmitter's servo reverse switch must be shifted. Now check the accelerator and the brake servo. Pull the transmitter's throttle control. The carburetor must open all the way and the model should roll easily. Now push the transmitter's throttle control forward. The vehicle brakes and the tires should lock when the brakes are fully engaged. When the throttle control is moved to the middle, the brakes should be unable to grip and the vehicle should roll smoothly. The petrol engines in our large models run exclusively on a 1 to 25 fuel mixture. For example, use a mix of 5 liters of Super or Super Plus petrol with 200 milliliters of premium two-stroke engine oil. Fill the petrol can shake the can. Please don't use any other mixture because that will damage the engine. Wear suitable fireproof gloves. Open the fuel can only outdoors. Also wear safety glasses during operation. Attention! Do not store your vehicle with a full tank. Run it until the tank empties. Yeah. 
Before starting the engine, press the fuel pump a couple of times until the fuel visibly fills the bubble. Open the carburetor choke flap and then pull the rope starter once so that the engine audibly fires. Make sure not to pull the rope starter out more than 40 centimeters. Otherwise, the starter may be damaged. Now close the choke flap and pull the rope starter again until the engine runs. To turn off the engine, press the engine out switch till the engine is off. The batteries are fully charged and your vehicle is ready for its first ride. Find a broad surface with no obstacles. Do not run your model on public streets or squares. Important! Check the air filter before every drive. If it is dry or dirty, it must be cleaned or freshly treated with Carson air filter oil. Always switch on your transmitter and then your vehicle. When you finish, reverse the sequence. After the drive, switch the vehicle off first and then the transmitter. So, always switch the transmitter on first and off last. Now do a quick range check. This has to be done with the engine running. Have a helper hold your vehicle and watch for radio interference. Slowly move away from the vehicle. If you have any interference, there could be various causes. The batteries in the transmitter or receiver could be too weak or not fully charged. If your vehicle still experiences interference, shut it off and see an experienced model builder or your dealer. Before your engine can run at full power, it is important to break it in. This is the most important step for seeing to it that your engine always runs fast and sure. Not doing this could damage your engine and void the warranty. Your model must not move when it idles. If it does, you must readjust the middle position of the accelerator and brake over the transmitter. The middle steering position must also be readjusted if necessary. To break in the engine, steer your model in a circle at low throttle and avoid fast acceleration. Never above half throttle. Accelerate briefly and let the vehicle roll. Empty two tanks of fuel this way. Between tank fill-ups, let the model cool off for 10 to 15 minutes. On the third tank, you can briefly go full throttle for 2 to 3 seconds. Gently run this tank empty also. Take your time with the break-in phase. Your engine will thank you. The engine doesn't start. If the engine doesn't start anymore, this can be due to the following reasons. The engine could be running too rich. Turn the high RPM carburetor needle until it stops. Remember the RPM reading. Then let the engine run a few seconds until the excess fuel has burnt. Then cut the engine by pressing its stop switch. Now, by turning the same carburetor needle, you need to bring the RPM back up to the number you brought it to before. When in doubt, restore the factory settings. Carefully turn the carburetor needle all the way in. After that, the low RPM carburetor needle must be turned to one and a quarter RPM, and the high RPM carburetor needle must be turned to one and a half RPM. The spark plug could be defective or soiled. Pull off the spark plug connector. Screw out the spark plug with a spark plug wrench. Now insert the spark plug into the spark plug connector and hold it with pliers to one of the engine screws. If no ignition sparks are visible when you use the rope starter, you need to clean the plug or replace it. If the idle speed shifts, during the warm-up period, you need to readjust it. 
Turning the idle adjustment screw clockwise raises the idle speed. Turning it counterclockwise lowers it. You have found the ideal setting when the RPM is low and constant and the engine doesn't stall on braking. The carburetor needles on Carson petrol engines are preset at the factory. This means that there is generally no need for readjustment. However, depending on the air filter, muffler and location, some correction may be needed. The carburetor has two adjustment screws. One is for adjusting low RPM and the other for high RPM. These are marked L for low and H for high RPM. First, adjust the high RPM carburetor needle. Run the engine for two minutes until it reaches operating temperature. Turn the high RPM carburetor needle clockwise one twelfth of a turn. This creates a leaner fuel air mixture and increases speed and performance. You can repeat the process again until the performance improves further. Once the performance stops improving, the engine is running too lean and is no longer getting enough lubrication. Then you have to move the carburetor needle back one twelfth of a turn counterclockwise. Now the high RPM carburetor needle is optimally adjusted. Always make sure that the setting isn't too lean. Now it's time to set the low RPM carburetor needle. For this the engine must also be at operating temperature. This is important. Turn the carburetor needle, now for low RPM, one twelfth of a turn clockwise. This creates a leaner fuel air mixture and should improve acceleration. You can repeat the process again if the performance improves further. Once a performance stops improving or gets worse, the engine is running too lean and is no longer getting enough lubrication. Then you have to move the carburetor needle back one twelfth of a turn counterclockwise to make the mixture richer then the acceleration should improve again. The high RPM carburetor needle is optimally adjusted if your vehicle accelerates fast and clean. Always make sure that the engine isn't adjusted too lean. Running the engine richer is always better than running it too lean. If you're not sure or you don't like the results, go back to the engine's default settings. Carefully turn the carburetor needle all the way in. After that, the low RPM carburetor needle must be turned to one and a quarter RPM and the high RPM carburetor needle must be turned to one and a half RPM. Now you can step on the gas. Safety always comes first. Make sure you never injure yourself or anyone else. Soon you'll get used to your model's handling. With proper care and maintenance you should enjoy your model for a long time.